I'm comedian Timmy Boyle, and this is the greatest live Instagram comedy experience that nobody knew about. March of 2020, I just arrived home from tour when COVID-19 shut down the world. So despite being severely technically challenged, I started a daily live Instagram show right here from my living room. Because how hard could it be? And how long could a pandemic last? Apparently longer than five months. So now, a hundred episodes later, I've called comedians as diverse in experience as they are in style from all around the world to discuss comedy, life, and, well, whatever. I had no goals, which was a great idea. I avoided tech checks, which was a bad idea. And I eventually wore no pants. The jury's still out on that one. And my OJ, over 150 days, transformed from refreshing drink to rancid mystery liquid right before our eyes. It was a random, free-flowing, hilariously messy ride into the minds and backstage lives of entertainers where anything could happen, and did, including a trip to a goat farm. Overcoming a lack of direction, resources, and tech ineptness, as well as multiple zombie cyber attacks, a project not expected to last even a week soon developed into a must-watch show like no other. But don't take my word for it. See for yourself, right here, on another episode of Calling Comedians in Quarantine. Is that it? Did we get it all? Awesome. Well, it's just me waiting. Joy is here. Joy, welcome. We have Budweiser 1924 coming in here. Jacob's coming in. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Mike Hickman is here. Mike, I'm going to be bringing you into this call in a couple minutes here as we wait for some others to uh, jump on. Mary Jane Baker is in. Uh, thank you those for tuning in right now on your Saturday night. I'm sure you could be doing a whole lot of other things. We know we're all super busy during this quarantine time. Uh, Budweiser is here while driving. Um, hey, uh, why not? I mean, you don't have to really pay attention to anything that goes on in this show. We have one goal on this show, and that is to have no goals. So we could make it for an interesting ride or an incredibly boring ride. Either way worth having on while you're driving. Uh, Budweiser, you, um, what, uh, like, screen TV off to the side? Are you in the back seat while someone else is driving and you've got, like, the whole, you know, big screen, surround sound experience happening? Are you just kind of lounging? You know, what's going on? Um, just swerved to hit the zombies. Nice. Uh, listen, don't... Um, if you see zombies, you run them over. They are crafty. If you if you let them by once, they will come back. Don't listen to the whole thing of, oh, don't kill me. I'll go away. They will not. They will not. They will keep coming at you. You need to be firm. You either you can say no, like say no firmly to the zombies because they are more scared of you than you are of them. But if you get the opportunity and you feel that they are threatening you, and they, and they, for whatever reason, maybe they didn't hear the no, maybe their ears are gone. Um, you need to take them down right then and there because they will, it kind of like, I, I think it's kind of like with zombies, um, we can't be, I feel bad saying this because I am like a huge Batman fan, but you simply can't treat zombies like Batman treated his villain counterparts. You know, he would catch them, no, wait, it's the other way around. Yeah, yeah, that makes more sense because Batman's awesome. What am I talking about? It's the villain counterpart would capture Batman, would never pull the mask off, would tie him up in a big chain, hang him over a bucket of, of like, like acid, and slowly, over like a period of 36 hours, lower him while the criminal went off to do other things to torture Batman. Of course, giving him 36 hours. Ago. That's, what, that's what zombies would do. Don't do that. If you get a chance to take down a zombie, you just do it. You drop them in the, in the, in the, 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 the big thing of, of acid. If you've got a big thing of acid. I don't, even, I don't even know if that kills zombies. I haven't even done the research on that. 
Anyways, um, oh good, okay, so someone confirmed here, um, I own Decker, uh, the ears are gone, so zombies do not hear very well, so you have to, you have to say no, but also do this, no, no zombies, because they, cause sometimes they can't hear, thank you, I didn't, we have a, we have a zombie expert in the room, and I've been waiting to talk to one in a while, anyways, um, thank you for those who are coming in, those of you who, uh, know who I am, um, I'm going to tell you anyways. My name is Timmy Boyle from Upstanding Comedy. Those of you who don't know, basically what you're watching right now is Calling Comedians Into Quarantine. This is episode 31. Ever since I stopped being able to perform on stages and I've been locked down in my living room, I've decided, hey, here's an opportunity. I could go on this online world and uh, right here from my living room and I could call comedians and bring them from their living rooms into my living room and then into your living room and we will talk about life and comedy and quarantine and zombies and literally whatever else might come up. Believe me, some of the past episodes have gone down some crazy routes. We are going to see which crazy route um, we, uh, we go down tonight with comedian Mike Hickman. I'm going to call Mike right now and try to bring him into this one. Here he is, Mike Hickman. For Mike Hickman here on Calling Comedians in Quarantine. Mike Hickman. Hey, hey. Can you hear me, Mike? All right. I'm having a bad... I'm having a bad connection here, my friend. He's staring at me. Wait, you can hear me? You're super fuzzy. This is one of the beautiful things of, of live shows. You're moving slow motion. You look like a zombie. You're just... Wait, where are you? Like in the middle of nowhere? Uh, signal for some reason it's like super cloudy uh, our signal is, is iffy tonight it looks like so I turned on our Wi-Fi but our Wi-Fi is iffy as well so I'm trying to find a good spot can you hear me okay. at all what I can hear you clearly but um, you're uh, visually you're you're there's a delay so um, you want do you want to want to cut back out and come back in and see if it resets everything yeah, sure. Let's try that. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Mike Hickman uh, <laughs> in the middle of uh, in the middle of nowhere. Um, so we're going to find figure out how to do this. Uh, this is the beautiful thing of live um, TV. I'm just going to call it TV because that's what I know. Um, it's just a TV on a small thing. It's just TV on a phone in my case, or maybe your, your computer. I don't know. Anyways, um, this is part of the thing. So uh, right now we only have uh, about two people because everybody else went, I'm not going to sit here and watch two people talk that I can't even hear um, or see properly. Well, I'm just going to say that if you left, uh, you are you made a bad mistake. But if you left, you wouldn't know that. So those of you who are still watching, good on you because as you know from the past, this will be another awesome episode of Calling Comedians in Quarantine once we get Mike Hickman back in here. Um, while we're waiting, oh shoot, I shouldn't have touched my face. Oh, that's one of the rules. Oh, I did it again. Oh, well. Um, I don't even know what the rules are anymore. I think it's definitely six feet. Don't touch your face. Uh, don't cough on people. I don't know. Anyways, I hear. I, I try not to even get outside very often anymore. Um, just, I mean, it, it's a chore just to go to get groceries. Like you literally got to go. If I go to my grocery store right now and literally like, you know, sometimes people point and you're like, they're not even pointing in the right direction. Well, I know for a fact, my grocery store is back that way, past Alyssa Milano. That's where it is. And it's just a couple minute walk. And if I walk over there and I just want to buy one banana, just one, for a border crossing, something, you know, just because that throws off the border guards, whatever it may be. Um, the, uh, I have to get a cart. I have to get a cart, even if I'm just getting one banana. And then I have to walk, I go in, I pick up the banana, and then you have to follow the arrows. 
So you take your cart, I've got my banana, and I put it in the big part of the cart so it makes it feel like it's worth having a cart. And then I follow the arrows around and down and 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 down. And then you come across the front and then you can get in line um, at the thing. But then you can't put the banana on the um, treadmill. It's not really a treadmill, but I often would get up on it and run. And they frowned upon that. I don't know if that's just a small town rule but they did not like that at all. But on that little conveyor thing, you can't put your banana there until the other person is completely checked out of all their stuff. So they're loading up and you're just like, I just want to pay for this banana. That's it. But you got to stand like 10 feet back from the conveyor belt thing until they're completely done. And then got this, got this little old couple in their 140s slowly putting everything in the bag. You're just like, I just gotta pay for this banana. Sir, stay back. Okay. So I stay back. And then eventually I just go, <coughs> and then everybody moves quicker. That's, that's how you get everything done. Anyways, Mike Hickman is back here. Let's see, here we go. Uh, let's see if we can get Mike Hickman back in here. I just touched my face again. I got this itch, I don't know what it is. I don't know what to do. Here we go, Mike Hickman, are we live? Mike. Uh oh, it's gonna be one of those nights. It's gonna be one of those nights, people. Hey. Uh oh. No. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Mike, just if you can hear me, I can't hear you. Um, oh, wait, wait. Is the is the Wi-Fi better? That looks. I think I think so. I think I see you. It's not perfect, but it's better. I think I see you. And can I hear you? I can hear you. Is that it? Uh, uh oh. Hey, Megan. Uh, for those of you who are tuning in right now, um, there's a slight delay. We're trying to talk to Mike Hickman. Uh, he is uh, down uh, in the middle of a. F oh. I'm I'm working on it all I can here, so. <laughs> All right. Okay. So well, what? that's, that's the, that's the best picture that I've had so far. Um, but there's like, there's like a three second delay from your mouth moving and your words hearing. Okay. Let's try to get rid of these and just see. All right. I don't know. We're, uh, we're having some weird weather around here. So it's, uh, uh, that this seems to be syncing up nicely. Hello to Megan, who's just come in here, Megan. Um, I, hey, Megan. Wait. All right, say say something. Say something long and exciting, and I'll just make sure that we're good. Okay. All right. Well, you were talking about zombies earlier, and oh, I'm so glad you brought that topic up because, uh, in addition to comedy, I do acting as well, and I was just in a, an episode of uh, Fear the Walking Dead on the AMC network. And nice. one, and that particular episode, I got to play one of the walkers, one of the zombies, and uh, so it gave me some insight to the uh, to the life of the of the zombie. And um, I don't know, it, they're just misunderstood. They they are. Um, and just just so you know, we we this seems to be very clear. I, it's right as of right now, wherever you don't move from this spot, okay? Do not move from this All spot. Right. Okay, I'm here now. And also, if anything goes wrong, understand. We have seen way worse than this technical problem on this show, so it's all good. Um, for those, all right. for those of you who are watching, let's just set this up now before we begin. Uh, my name is Timmy Boyle from Upstanding Comedy. That's M Mike Hickman down there on the bottom, unless your phone is upside down. And you are watching Calling Comedians in Quarantine. 
um, a chance to talk about comedy life and uh, whatever else might be happening. So, Mike, we've got obviously we have a zombie fan in the house here with uh, Megan. Those who have been following the show know that I am convinced that the zombies are out there. But I've been very depressed lately because this is like day 34 for me. And uh, like literally, Mike, worst apocalypse ever. Like I have, I have zero right. zombie kills and I was hoping I'd have at least one by now. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the TV movies can be misleading about how easy it is to get a kill. Um, but uh, it, it's amazing because they can walk at two miles per hour. But... catch a marathon runner mm -hmm. uh so they're, they're very very tricky um i had to go to zombie school to to be on fear the walking dead nice and uh they they actually so they have continuity across all of the uh seasons they make you do an hour of zombie school where they teach you how to walk how to do your head they said don't do like the typical frankenstein arms and uh Wait. don't uh drag your leg how are you supposed to walk that's, that's i don't i actually yeah. never watched so you, the walking dead so i only know zombies from from my own just thought processes i don't even know if it's well, genuine honestly i never i never watched the show until i until i was on it i'm like i kind of need to see what i'm in yeah and uh so here's how you're supposed to walk and here's how they tell you in in, in zombie school First of all, you can't do Frankenstein arms and, or, or, or the uh, producers and directors will talk to you about that. Okay. Right. Because they said that's unrealistic. Of course. Yes. Now, are, yeah. any, are any of the people teaching you, are, are they zombies or have, have they been? Like, where do they get their knowledge from? Yeah, it's, it's passed down from zombie generation to zombie generation. But actually, the, uh, the production assistants uh, pull you aside and they have you do this zombie school thing. They said, think of this. Think of. Number one, you only have enough brain function to just move your body yeah. and you're hungry. Okay. Yeah. They said, now, as far as the walk, act like you've been in a bar all night long. It's about four in the morning and you're walking out of the bar and there's concrete in your shoes. So you're not dragging your legs, but you're just doing your very best to maintain to try to get to your friend's car because you're not going to drive. So, right. well, and basically, in a drive. nutshell, yeah, and then you have to demonstrate, demonstrate, demonstrate. And they're like, no, no, we want it to be realistic. I'm like, nothing about this is very realistic. But you never know. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. So, so what if you were like me, though? And if I, came, if I happened to come out of a bar at four in the morning and I was yeah. always the sober one because I just drank my orange juice and water, most likely. Um, and I just kind of walking out like this. Like, can I, could I tell the, the guys on the show and say, look, if that's your example then I would just, this is how I would do it. Yeah, I think they, they have no argument against that. Right? Like, you're like, hey, that's how you taught me. Yeah, you yeah. told me to come out like it was 4 a.m. in a bar. And, and I'm just kind of coming out like, like pretty happy because everyone else yeah. is like passed out and I can, just, I can just go about my business. It makes sense. It makes sense. Now, you, there's ways to tell if someone's a zombie. Like if, you're, if your spouse, uh, here's a shameless plug. This is, this is on... on um, on next week's uh, podcast, on my podcast, uh, Jeff Allen's going to be on there. I think you know Jeff Allen, right? Um, Comedian Jeff I Allen. believe we met briefly at the CCA, but um, yeah. I do not. Yeah. Um, well, we're do uh, with some other friends of mine from a radio show. Before that segment, we're doing a top ten. This week's top ten is top ten ways you uh, you your spouse might be a zombie, or how to tell if your your spouse right. might be a zombie. Yeah, and one of them is occasionally. When you wake up in the morning, they might have bad breath. That's how you can tell that your spouse might be a zombie. Oh, so, well, what if that? Yeah, what, that's, maybe that's a sign that you're a zombie. It could be. It goes both ways, for sure. Um, yeah. Also, uh, tickle fights going way too far. Just way too far. They just don't, they don't, a zombie doesn't know when to stop. So, no. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm drinking Canada Dry in honor of you. So, a little ginger ale. Cheers, my friend. There you go. Keep right there. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, where where exactly are you being quarantined right now? Uh, I'm just right outside of Austin, Texas. So put a dot right in the middle of Texas, and that's where you'll find me right now. But quarantine, I'm we're we're actually coming and going a lot. See, my wife is a healthcare worker, and she works at a mental health facility for teenagers, a place I used to work at. So you have a comedian working at a mental health facility. That's that's always good. You don't need you, know, you don't even but, need to write jokes at that point. 
No, sometimes it was hard to leave because they're like, do you really work here? Are you a patient? Do you work here? You know, it's very difficult. So I've got a badge. So anyway, uh, I left there, but my, my wife works there. So she's in and out all the time. And uh, and I'm taking her to work back and forth as well. So our quarantine has been not so quarantined, but we are home a whole lot more. If it's not at work, we're we're pretty much here. So working on projects. Now, Joy, um, Joy has stepped in with a uh, very a medical um I and I assume Joy knows what she's talking about. Halitosis, without because you're talking about bad breath, uh, it's the yeah. disease of the soul. The young oh. pope. I don't. I, does the, did the young pope say that? I don't know. So now that would be interesting because if bad breath was indeed the sign of being a zombie, then um, it couldn't really be the disease of a soul because the soul is gone. Is, is it not? There you go. Right. Stands to reason. Yeah. Like if I don't know what your theological beliefs are or if anybody watching this has theirs, but if 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 a zombie is dead, where did their soul go? Into cats. Hmm. Yeah. By the way, we have some kittens if you want one, I'll send you one. Oh, I love cats. Cats are my favorite. Yeah. Are you are you a cat person or a dog person? I'm assuming you're a cat person. I well, I've I've had to become a cat person. We oh. we have never bought a cat. We have cats. Oh, they just show. They they show. They just show up. They show up and and here they are. But but we've got three new kittens. I would go and get one, but I'm afraid we lose connection again. So I'm glued to the couch right now. Fair enough. So but uh, I have yeah. here. I have uh, I have a, a cat. Oh yeah, good old Garfield. Yeah, I got a whole. In high school, I had one like that had suction cups on its paws, and it and I would stick it in the back windshield of my truck. Uh, That's things we do here in Texas. I have I have that one with a suction cup. Oh nice. I yeah. I got a whole group back here. You guys don't even see the the, the Garfield. <laughs> Garfield was the very first cartoon character that I learned to draw when I was a kid. So I used to draw Garfield on everything because I, I eventually I at one point I wanted to be an animator that was that was, a cartoonist was what I would ultimately wanted to be what uh, what did you want to be before you became a comedian uh let's see when I was a kid I wanted uh, I wanted to be a stunt guy oh for sweet. a while but I've always yeah but since I was uh five years old I always wanted to uh the arts I wanted to uh sing and act and so uh, when I was five years old, when uh, a couple of the, you know, in the 70s, um, the, uh, the shows that would come on, we would watch. We only had two channels. We had the good channel and the channel that you could sort of see. Uh, kind of like, on how you turn the kind antenna. of like my internet and your internet. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my dad would yell out the front door, turn the antenna a little more, turn the antenna. And so anyway, the Dukes of Hazard would come on. Yes. or Yes. And so... What would happen was I would put my little tape recorder by the TV during Hee Haw because they always had all these. Hee Haw! Uh, I love Hee Haw. Yeah, they always had these songs. And so I would record the songs. I would go back to my room. I would memorize the songs. Yeah. But then I would come back in the living room at five years old and put on a concert for my for my family uh, wearing my uh, Superman underoos oh. sometimes. Uh, now, the underwear that's fun to wear. Now, just so you know, Superman is, uh, we discussed this last night on the show, uh, Superman in my home is the the one that you cannot mention, kind of like the Voldemort of Harry Potter. Like, oh, yeah, okay. he's the is the S word. My kids, my kids, like, seri- they, that was the only thing okay. they were grounded for. Um, I just I walked over oh. here just because I wanted to bring some uh, some context. You brought the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> and just just wanted to show that I that I had that. Um, yeah, classic. Uh, the A Team is one of my favorites. I don't know if you if you remember the A Team. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember the A Team, Mr. T. So when you were Mur- Murdoch, yeah, yeah, fan face, face is my favorite. Here's a little, here's a little tidbit, and then I want to ask you a question about the stuntman dream. Um, uh, so face is actually a life lesson. The character face on the A Team is a life lesson I use for my children and for anybody who was willing to listen to me. And seeing as now you and everyone else is a captive audience of sorts, I'm going to share this with you. Um, the face principle can accomplish anything that you want in life. Like face could walk into a hospital um, with a white coat on 
and he would approach the desk and then he would just start talking super fast and super, being super confident. And the person behind the desk would get all frazzled. And next thing you know, Face is like allowed to just walk in the hospital and, and walk out with like an ambulance and nobody questions because he just made everybody. So talk fast, be confident, and Face literally could do anything he wanted. And I think that's a true thing about life. You should always try to be a Face. That's, that's the lesson of the day right there. I love it. It is. That is. It's the yeah. lesson of many days. Uh, Roy says, uh, "Sorry, I'm late. Margaret was laying a beating on me." Uh, Roy is Roy is one of our very faithful followers. He has been uh, on the show from the very beginning, and Margaret and him are both like hundred degree black belts. I've actually seen them spar. Um, we came off the circuit tour, wow. the last, the second last night on the circuit tour. We we were we were staying at their at their place, and they sparred in the in the kitchen, and they started off slow, like this. And I was like, oh, that's not very fancy. And next thing you know, they're like swinging like 100% plus at each other. And I was like scared for them, but man, they're good. So when he says they're immediately in a beating on them, they were literally probably like like sparring in the in the dojo. It's super <laughs> cool. Got to stay sharp. Yeah, I, I want to learn how to do it. I, I mean, I already am pretty good at it. And, and we, the him and I have sparred. But um, this kind of connects back to the stuntman thing because in, in that stuntman world, you know, being a young person, I mean, really, it's kind of a dream to get hurt, I guess. I, I don't know. But I used to fall down the stairs on purpose to impress the guests. So whenever somebody would ring the doorbell, remember the days when you would ring a doorbell and you would actually show up at someone's house? And right, I would yeah. run to the top of the stairs, up and around the corner to the second landing. And then as soon as they would open the door, my mom would be like, hey, welcome. And I would just come rolling down the stairs. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and and now it's probably why I have scoliosis now, a little curvature of the spine, but it was well worth it. But I had learned that not from watching a stuntman. Well, I guess he's a stuntman. He, well, he did his own stunts. Was when watching Tim Conway on um, the Carol Burnett show. All right. uh, when he was, remember when he was the old man and he would shuffle very slowly? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he did this one scene where he fell down the stairs in slow motion. And I was, I was sold on that sort of physical humor. And then I grew up, you know, Chevy Chase is amazing at it. Um, there's, yeah, there's a couple of the fall King. Yeah. There's a couple of amazing, uh, uh, John Ritter, um, on three's mm -hmm. company and like yep. nailed that over the couch flip every single time. It's one thing I should actually try during the quarantine, but why, <laughs> why did you want to be a stunt man? And did you actually do anything growing up or theatrically? where you, you actually put your body in those positions to possibly hurt yourself. Okay, so in the little town I grew up in, uh, it, was, it was called ARP outside of Tyler, Texas. Uh, it had about a thousand people. ARP, A-R-P. Oh, ARP, okay. ARP, yep. And uh, so there wasn't a whole lot to do anyway. And so um, we, me and some of my friends, we would, pretty much see who could get hurt the most. Now, my thing was to build ramps and see how I could jump that on my bike. Um, I didn't have the kind of bike that you were supposed to be doing that with anyway. And I didn't have good wood either. Okay. So whatever. And so eventually the ramps, they got more and more makeshift. So I just started piling a bunch of wood and I would try to run through it on my bike and, uh, you know, cut, bruise and all. But somehow I felt like I've got you know, I've got status now. And I thought, you know what? If I could get paid for doing this one day, mm. that would be like a dream come true. Um, and then, and I, then I thought, hey, comedy, I can get paid to do the same thing. If people will throw things hard enough, right? Then, same thing. And yeah. probably just as much money in comedy as stuntman work, I would imagine. Just, just as much. Yeah. Now, um, <laughs> did you ever hurt yourself though? Like, like badly, like hospital bound? I've never been in the hospital. Have, have you, or did you ever hurt yourself bad enough to go? No, I've been in the hospital twice in my entire life. Once when I was three, cause I got my tonsils out mm -hmm. and I don't even, I, I, I barely remember that except for them trying to something about a little silver bullet they wanted to put somewhere. And, and that's the only part I really remember. And I don't really want to talk about that. Mm. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, the other time was I was uh, 12 years old and funny you mentioned I flipped over the couch and uh, and we had a, uh, a brick fireplace and I kept rolling and just hit the back of my head on the corner of the bricks mm -hmm. and had to go get three, three stitches. And that's 
that's about it. But I did learn some about myself that three stitches, a little head bump, and I'm throwing up in the bathroom. Probably shouldn't be a stunt guy. I could I couldn't handle that. So yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I um I have never and, never been in the hospital for anything. And I and like I said, I used to like fall down the stairs and I used to put myself I'm a diver in baseball. Like it's 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 crazy really. But when you're awesome, I guess you just you just break through all that stuff. Right, right. Um, yeah, and uh, it's, I don't know, we, uh, we lived up the street. It, it, was, it was amazing in our town. So we had, we had, you know, a lot of Hispanic population. We had a lot of white population. We had, we had a little bit of, of, of everybody. And now I'm, I'm Hispanic, so I'm full-blood Hispanic. My dad is, hmm. is Pedro Lopez, and my, and my mom is uh, Elisa Caballero Lopez. And I was adopted when I was a baby. So thus my Kickman. Right. And uh, by the way, I, I, I met my uh, Hispanic um, mom, I mean, many years ago. And one of the first questions she asked me was, mijo, how come you don't speak no Spanish? And I said, because you sold me to white people. So uh, <laughs> that's <a> true story. <laughs> and my mom, my uh, mom that raised me still has the receipt, too. I don't know why she kept it, but she still has it. Um, anyway, the town we, we grew up in, yeah, you, you do. You never know. It was amazing because I would have uh, the little kids that lived across the street from us. Very, I mean, this is nothing against any culture here, but but they uh, they'd fall off their bike and just cry, cry, cry like they'd fallen off of a building. Mm -hmm. But there's this one little kid, had to be maybe six years old, riding a ten speed, just up and down, trying to a bike that's way too big would fall and just roll through the uh, through the street, and you could ride anywhere in that town. He would get up and dust himself off, laugh, get right back up on the bike. So it's amazing the threshold of pain. I figured, should I have being Hispanic? I should have a better threshold of pain, mm. but no, I don't. I don't. I don't like pain. I'm gonna Google that out. So stunt Stuntman was is out. No more Stuntman. So so it had to be comedy, acting, music. So do you enjoy? Do you enjoy more? Like like let's put money aside because obviously one of these something pays your bills more than other most likely, but. Um, do you like being behind the camera or being on the stage more? Did you hear that? Or did we lose uh, you? I, I did. You, 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 you froze up for just a second. So I heard something, something bills more than nothing. So try, try that again. Right. Sorry. Okay. So basically, do you basically do you enjoy being behind the camera or on the stage more? If you had to pick one. Uh, between acting and, and comedy, like, yeah. Um, uh, no comedy, Dev. I like being on the on the on the live stage, yeah. uh, more. But act, acting helps helps pay some of the bills, and I love the art of it. There's a lot more downtime. There's a lot more uh, uh, on the set. There's you know, and and I look at everything as ministry too, because during that downtime, there's a lot of conversations and things that happen. So. Uh, I figure as long as I'm involved in the arts, it's a happy place for me. Mm -hmm. But first and foremost, I love being on on the live stage. I came from musical theater. Okay. Um, then, uh, then, um, uh, then you know, jumping into comedy. I traveled as a musician for many, many years. Uh, I was doing public speaking, started adding in some comedy, but I wasn't a comedian. I was just that funny speaker and that musician. I did like youth camp circuits, leading worship. I was a youth pastor. Don't, when you have ADD, you do a lot of things, mm -hmm. and so, um, but made its way finally down down to comedy, and so the live stage is always taking precedence, other than being behind the camera, whether it be music, uh, comedy, musical theater. But that's that's really home. Yeah, I always wrote uh, I, I wrote my own plays when I was in school, so I love I loved stage. I, but I went to school for film and television. I still I love acting, and I want I want to do more. Um, in TV, film, my, my time's not over. Samuel L. Jackson didn't get discovered until he was in his mid forties. So, um, so it's, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, wow. yeah, he was. Uh, I was think it was uh, Spike Lee. Uh, he was a heroin act addict or something at the time. Brought him into was it Jungle Fever or something like that. Anyways, I may got all the facts wrong, but yeah, he, or no, wait, was it? Yeah, ET. It was ET. Might have yeah, might have been ET. Yeah, because he was. That's right. Yeah, he was. He was the he was uh, ET's um, M and M dealer. That's what that's what it was. Yeah, they had the, they had the, right. the kid the kid friendly it down. Um, but musical theater, I was never in musical theater, but I love like my favorite favorite musical 
um, was a uh, fan of the opera. I love fan of oh. the opera. And, like yeah. I even had, I had the cassettes. So if there's anybody on here is watching that is too young, like it was like a, a cassette, we'd have to put it in a machine. And if, if, if sometimes it would like go all wonky and have to put a pencil in. Anyways, it's hard to describe. Right. But I used to sit at home. This was when I was in high school. I would come home and it actually shows you how uh, uh, quiet my life was. I would put on these earphones and I would just, I would sing to Phantom of the Opera. And I would just, I would just sit on the couch before anybody was else back of the house. And I would come home instead of going out with my friends and I would just sing to Phantom of the Opera. So that was my favorite one. Um, here, how about this? You recognize this? Uh, think of me, think of me fondly when we say goodbye. Uh, that was, that's my Phantom of the Opera. You nailed it. Thank you. I know. I, I was, I was, tra I was, it, it was what, big word, whatever the big word is, just transcendent. It was transcendent. Thank you. Uh, Roy, Roy has come in and said that uh, it was Reese's Pieces, not M&M's talking to the E.T. reference. And uh, oh. I would just like to put a disclaimer out right now that if you are coming on this show expecting me to utter any truth or factual information, uh, you need to go somewhere else because I literally don't care about truth. So just want to put that out there. <laughs> so, so Mike, so now, so now you, you, you tour professionally. Um, we've even, we've talked um, about, uh, about getting you up here on our circuit tour, which, uh, you know, assuming this thing eventually ends, uh, we aim, we aim to do that. Have you been to Canada before? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I've been to Canada once. I was in the Toronto area and surrounding areas. It's been quite a while. It's been been decades. But I was uh, with a, a band from. It was actually a, a a praise band from my church. We went up there and we were uh, with. Um, oh, I forget the the speaker's name. I, I should I should know. Oh, Henry Blackaby Jr. You know Henry yes. Blackaby. Yes, yes, I do. I don't so, know him. Like he hasn't been to my house for dinner right. or anything. But well. His son was there speaking, Henry Blackaby Jr. speaking, and so we just did a, a tour of churches and colleges, and we would just set up and play everywhere. And a funny story, it was um, our drummer was Tim Hawkins, oh. and we were, we were in our 20s, and he was doing comedy. He was starting out part-time. He was still doing like a computer job, I think was his other job. And he was hilarious then, almost lo longer story, almost got us arrested, I think, or could have gotten us arrested after we were there for a half an hour. We rented a van and we got pulled over by, uh, by a Mountie because we were breaking every law anywhere. So the guy just let us go. But we had told Tim, please make sure you say nothing as we got pulled over. He said, say absolutely nothing. And he was just holding his tongue the whole time. He was the guy was just like, you, you got your seat belts flapping in the wind. You, you're speeding. You go, and he, he, five or six different offenses. He goes, you're not even trying. He said, nah, go on. And Wait, uh, so. What, this mountain, this mountain was British? Yeah, he had a British accent. Yeah. Wow. Now that must be years ago. I hope ago he was actually we, a Mountie. It could have just been some guy in a funny hat. Yeah, because we cut it. We cut our ties with the Brits a uh, long time ago. So this must have been this must have been uh, quite a while ago. Well, I'm uh, I'm 49, and at that time, I think I was 26. Mm. So and yeah, and can't yeah, because Canada is only I think 28 years old, 29 years. Old. I don't know. I don't know for sure. Roy Roy might want to fact check <laughs> me on that, but. Um, uh, <laughs> Thanks, Roy. Timothy Bannister comedy uh, just uh, randomly spouted out Les Miserables. I don't know if he's calling you, you or I miserable, but uh, that seems like a pretty, sh pretty hard shot to just uh, to say, oh, hey, um, number one, uh, jo Josie Robertson is here. Um, I'm just going to tell you this, Mike, just so you know, um, Josie is a um, Irish dancer and uh, we had her on our stage with Joby Sad was up here. Um, and uh, right. so if you know anything about um, Irish dancing, uh, now is your time to speak directly to Josie. Go ahead. Um, I know very little about Irish dancing, although we did, we did, uh, now my wife is, is part Irish. Um, and so she can fight. So that's good. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, we did see Lord of the Dance live. Um, that's Irish, right? 
Is that the same uh, thing? Yes, that is, that is actually that's uh, that's that's Irish. Michael Flatley, I believe. Yeah, he he was there. He was looked like he was on his way to retire, but he came out at the end and just blew everybody away. Well, but I just blew. Uh, we saw him in, I think I just blew awesome. everybody away um, with the fact that that was actually a factual statement that I just made. Yeah, that was true. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, that, that's my knowledge of Irish right there. That's fair enough. It. Well, I'm Irish. My last name Boyle. Um, so we, uh, I have that Irish root. Um, uh, Roy is saying, God save the queen. That the, that's, uh, we're, we're, we really don't, didn't know we were, she's on our money, but, uh, we, I don't think we actually have to bow down anymore. Um, and, uh, and Joy apparently is saying that uh, the Les Miserables comment was to my singing, which seems very, very harsh because Joy's, Joy, I thought was a big fan, but now she's throwing out the barbs. Um, so Mike, tell me, <laughs> um, what, what is, you, you know, who's, who's quarantined with you right now? You and your wife? Me and my wife and our daughter. Okay. So she's 18 years old and yeah. Oh, how is it being quarantined with an 18 year old? Wonderful. She's actually more mature than me or my wife. And so, so he runs uh, the ship right now. Yeah. And, and see, she's, she's always been older than, than, than she is. So super creative. She's a drummer. She was a drummer in a metal band. Uh, nice. And she's also an, an artist, uh, draws, paints. Uh, so she's all artsy as well. In fact, we built her a, a tiny home out back on our property here. So she actually has her own house there but it's a, a living room downstairs but it's a, like you know one of those small homes yep. uh, then upstairs it was actually a shed from home depot two-story then we finished mm. it out air conditioned it um and now she has bedroom and kitchen upstairs and it's nice yeah so so she's not kind of the um the annoying bitter 18 year old that is, is sitting there going why can't i go anywhere that's it with her no that's actually me you're describing mm. so she's she's good she's fine um, so what, what do you guys do as a family? What, what have you done? Oh, let me say, let me, let me change it up. What have you done differently? Cause we're getting ready to, uh, we're going to be wrapping this up in a few minutes, but, um, cause I like to keep it short cause everyone's busy during quarantine season, but yeah. what is it that you guys have done differently as a family that you've discovered by being quarantined together that maybe you hadn't done in a long time or had never done? Uh, well, we, we really continued just doing more of the same things. We, we live two streets over from the lake, so we go boating. Uh, we've started doing um, not necessarily projects together, but projects at the same time. She's working on her tiny home. Uh, we've built an outdoor kitchen outside, so uh, mm -hmm. we're working a lot of that. My wife is gardening, so we're really just enjoying being a family, taking care of our property, taking care of, of what's here uh whereas since there is a little more time at home and just seeing how how this progresses here uh, then we each evening we we uh we watch tv together and and that doesn't sound super exciting but for us it's our best way to chill out and we're just doing really more of the same but the projects are are uh are really coming along nicely and so we enjoy just improving where we live that's awesome um do you guys uh, do you guys have a favorite show? Is it the zombie show because that's what you got your role? Or, or... <laughs> no, actually, uh, I, I've been I've been on it, but I have only seen like half an episode or an episode and okay. a half, something like that. So, so uh, but our our shows we'll watch will be like uh, uh, right now, like we were watching Vikings for a while, which was neat mm. uh, on the History Channel. And then uh, How I Met Your Mother. Yep. Uh, was one. There's a Canadian in there. There so, is, yes. Uh, we figured, yeah, we figured that out. And so, There's a Canadian. Um, in, in everything that is good, there is a Canadian. <laughs> like, if you if you say, that's yeah. a really good show or that's a good movie, chances are there's a Canadian in there somewhere. Right. Now, I, I have my shows that I have to watch separately that no one really wants to, to get caught up in there. But, I mean, things like, uh, you know, it was Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Green Arrow uh flash you know all the superhero stuff i love i i love anything from superhero stuff sci-fi but also like action and, and adventure but really you you put me in front of the tv in front of in front of a uh, sci-fi stuff i love it well i think uh i mean i think most of us as comics have some deep down desire to or not desire but desire for entertainment right like we're we're drawn to entertainment that's why we entertain 
So I don't, yeah. I don't think sitting down in front of the TV is a waste of time or blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I believe that my right. sensibilities of humor, everyone who said this is, oh, wow, you know, that's so cool. You're doing comedy. Yeah. Well, you didn't think it was so cool when all I would do is come home and watch sitcoms all evening. I was like, what are you doing? You don't even do anything. Well, all of that, all of that is, it, it was my way to learn. I wasn't, I wasn't learning the skills I needed at, at school, which is completely overrated. But, um, but I was, I was, I was learning at the sitcom. And so, especially now, like even nowadays, right? Kids are playing video games and they're like, you're just wasting your time. Are you kidding me? There are kids that are playing video games for way more money than I'm ever going to make in my, in my comedy career. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Hey, play those video games, man. Yeah. Well, um, we, I alluded to earlier, you know, we're, we're working on some of our individual things My my wife, um, she's been called to write. And so, uh, she's, she's setting up a space. Now we set up my, I have a recording studio also, and I do a lot of self tapes in there because I've got green screen and the light ring and all those things too. So that's been a great crew. We've been setting up our creative spaces. My daughter's setting up her painting area, my uh, wife setting up her uh, writing area. Uh, to work on some children books and uh, and uh, and a story that she's writing, nice. and, um, and then uh, I started my podcast back that's been off the air for a, for a couple of years, and uh, it's back. So this is quarantine that is really helped renew some some thoughts that's been in our heads for a while. We just never have taken the time to yeah. start it, you know. So uh, the creative juices are flowing, and so great time to be all this material that's just been on the back burner comedy wise, you know, it's like, you know what, this is, this is going to be the next few pieces. When we get back out, I'm going to introduce these three right here. Uh, the podcast networking, just like you're doing right now. This is great that you're doing Instagram live. And I'd see comedians that we're still, we're, you know, one of the first things we knew about God was he was creator in the very beginning, you know, when we're in his image and he, he's creative through us. So you put, artsy people and creatives and comedians and actors and musicians and tell them they can't perform anymore. It's going to come out other ways. So yep. content is still being created. And I've seen some very creative ways to do that. Yeah. It's so. uh, well, Joel Madison, who is in here and hello to Joel. Uh, he, we were talking uh, a, a few weeks ago now um, on this show um, just about the fact that this is a great opportunity. There's two aspects to what we do. Um, there's the performance aspect and then there's the, um, the working on the craft. And what, yeah. uh, what I've found, and like what you're talking about there, is that I've had to, because I can't focus on booking the gigs and getting myself on the stage and doing all that, my energy now is not just sitting down going, oh, I guess I can't perform. Now it's about working on my craft, not just by, not just by creating content, you know, but, but now like, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm constantly drawing in material. I, I'm, I'm, I feel the creative juices are flowing and it is an opportunity for all of us. I think everybody in life, this is an opportunity um, to, to grow in some way, to, to create a, high, a heightened skill set in some way, to improve somewhere, to add a new skill set, whatever it may be. But uh, I'm glad that you're taking advantage of that. Mike, that's the bell. So we're going to have to wrap this thing up here. Um, I stole that bell from my high school class when I graduated. Anyways, I love it. They didn't, they didn't graduate with <laughs> honors. So I felt I could take at least the bell. And I took a pencil sharp. Absolutely. And I took uh, the nameplate off of uh, my favorite classroom. Anyways, it's past all the statute of limitations. So none of that matters. Um, Mike, uh, last, last <laughs> thing here for you to do is uh, tell people how they can find you. And then we're going to head off on our own ways here. You bet. Uh, you can find uh, everything about me at mykickmancomedy.com. From there, you can jump to uh, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, um, you know, Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash mykickmancomedy. Uh, if you want to check out my podcast, uh, go anywhere you like podcasts and just look up the Laugh Track Comedy Cast okay. uh, with my kick with comedian Mike Kickman. You'll find it, but uh, that's even available also mykickmancomedy.com. That's it. Beautiful, man. Thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, just so you know, like uh, as soon as this thing ends, and I, I think it's going to be another 400 days, but once we get back on stage, uh, we'll, we'll, try, we'll get you up here to Canada. That would be so awesome. Love it. I can't wait, man. Thanks for having me on. This is a lot of fun. All right, Mike. Take care, man. Have a great evening tonight. <laughs> you too, buddy. Thanks. Bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Calling Comedians in Quarantine. 
Please take a moment to like, share, subscribe, and ring the little bell so you and your friends don't miss any of the laughs. Episodes will be uploaded here at Timmy's Shorts daily until I run out. And be sure to check out the description below for links to connect with myself or my guests on social media, support us by buying merchandise, and also download the podcast version of this show. Until next time, remember, your brain, it's for thinking, not for eating. So just say no to zombies. My name's Timmy Boyle.